Hey guys, Dr. Andre Pineset, the pre-med productivity expert, and today we are talking what you should be doing the summer before medical school, or as I call it, your last summer before you enter modern day slavery that the path to medicine is, um, but uh, your last summer, right before you start medical school, what should you be doing, right? You've picked a school now, you're excited, the butterflies are flowing, you can't wait to get started. How do you set yourself up for medical school success? That's this video. Before we get to that, as always, I'm gonna introduce myself for the first timers who are meeting me. Yes, I am as crazy as I look. I am Dr. Pineset. I am the original, there is nothing like me. I am the expert in studying, in productivity, and getting to medical school. If you wanna do one of those three things, this is the channel to be on. Take a second, subscribe to this channel right now. I'll pause. Subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna pause again. Like this video. Did you like the video? Did you subscribe to the channel? Okay, we can continue then. <laughs> All right, I have awesome stuff for you guys on this channel. Take a second, look around. Also, after you get done doing that, get over to my website, premedproductivity.com and get in a full length course so that way you can be your best. All right, I offer the best premed advice, premed advice you can trust at an affordable price. Now, to the topic of the day. How to spend your last summer as a free man or a free woman, right before medical school. The first thing I'm going to say, and students forget this, guys, celebrate. Take a second and celebrate the victory. You've made it through the trenches of pre-med. The biggest hurdle in becoming a doctor is getting into medical school. It's not the last hurdle, but it's the biggest hurdle, the biggest cutoff where so many people fall off in their journey. Getting into medical school is hard, so be glad you got in. Celebrate that. Spend time with your family. Be like, yes, I did it. And then after you celebrate for a little bit, then start getting into that mode of thinking about medical school. And the first thing you should be doing that summer after you relax and, and you're, after you celebrate is that you should get involved in some sort of early matriculation or enrichment summer program. Look around. Medical schools, for the most part now, have realized that it's nice to have their students get a taste of the school before the actual school year starts. And so many of them offer either enrichment programs or early matriculation programs, something along those lines in terms of the name. But what they are is just like what you had at your, at your college. They're opportunities for you to get additional experience, to improve your resume or CV, or to enrich you academically. They can do so much for you, just depends on the program, but you're gonna to wanna to get into those early because oftentimes they have limited spots compared to the number of students they admit. And so as soon as you decide on what school you're gonna to go to, this is before the summer. So as soon as you're like, oh man, you know what? Stanford is a school for me, whether it's in January, February, or March, as soon as that happens, and as soon as you say, I'm committed, I'm coming to Stanford, you then should start emailing the uh, counselor's department and asking them what opportunities do you have for students the summer before medical school starts. That way you can get first shot at getting in there and getting one of these spots. And these programs are amazing, not only because they enrich your portfolio and all that kind of stuff, but I think even more important than that, they do a couple things. The first thing is, is they give you an opportunity to get on that campus and get acclimated. We all know the worst part of moving is trying to find everything the grocery store, where you can study, where you can relax, where you can go to socialize, all these things. And so by getting there early in the summer, it gives you a chance to look around, get the lay of the land while you have time to explore, and you can really make the most of your medical school time in that area and have all the things you need set up. The second thing is, is it allows you to meet people both from establishing a support network, and I don't know about you guys, if you ever participated in summer programs in college before you started college or early on in your college process, so maybe you had a, a freshman orientation week. The people you meet during that freshman orientation week sometimes end up being your core group of people going throughout college, or at least for the early part of college. It's the same way going into medical school. If you participate in one of these summer programs, you're gonna make a couple connections for people that can be in your study group people that can be shoulders for you to cry on, people that can be roommates for you during the school year. And so it's all these things. It sets up your infrastructure of social network. So it's really, really nice from that peer standpoint. Additionally, it gives you the chance to get at some of the professors. So you can meet some of the professors who are gonna be teaching you. That way they get a sense of you for that letter of recommendation possibly for residency before everyone else. Also, you can meet research opportunities. 
So PhDs or MD PhDs or MDs who do clinical research, basic research, whatever research I might type it might be, you can meet these people and these can be contacts for you so you can say, you know what, I'm not going to start researching my freshman or my first year of medical school. I'm going to take a second, make sure I can handle the load, but I'd love to maybe have some articles that I can read and prepare because I'd love to be a part of your lab next summer. And you can make those connections and start reserving your spot that way you can build your resume as you go through your medical school. The third thing that it does is it gives you dibs on housing. So a lot of times if you can get on these campuses early, you can go to the housing department and say, listen, I'm here all summer. I'm part of a program. I'd love to get into housing now. Do you have anything available? And maybe you can get into exclusive housing. This actually happened at Stanford. So if you've never been to Stanford's campus, it's sprawling, it's big. Most people live on campus because it's subsidized housing compared to the surrounding areas. Well, of that housing, like all schools, some of it was built in like the 30s and some of it was built as, as recently as last year, right? So it's, it's this huge spectrum of what's modern and what looks like a prison cell. And by getting on campus early in the summer, the students who did that were able to get into the fancy, schmancy housing that was shared by the business school. And you know how business students live. They live fat. And so there were medical students who were in the summer enrichment programs who were, some of them were able to weasel their way into this housing early that the rest of us didn't even have a shot at because we came later. And because I didn't take advantage of a enrichment program, I was actually leading another program. I was the director of the California Alliance for Minority Participation, the Summer Science Academy. So I was leading a program as a director in enriching undergrads. But had I not been doing that, I would have definitely participated in the summer program. Uh, but because I didn't do that, I ended up having to live, believe this, this is how expensive Palo Alto is. I was in a 500 square foot concrete apartment, no air conditioning, no heater. It was awful. The kitchen had one sink. And you don't really appreciate this. This is off topic, on topic. But how many of you guys right in your kitchen, there's two sides of the sink. I never understood how important two sinks are until I only had one. And because the counter space was so small, I had one sink. Do you know how hard it is to wash and dry dishes in that one sink? It was crazy. It was like driving me nuts. But anyway, I was paying $1,800 a month for that 500 square foot apartment, one bedroom, concrete floors, and one kitchen sink. It was no good. And I could have avoided all that and lived in a place with vaulted ceilings and plush carpet or hardwood flooring if I would have come in the summer. And so it, that housing thing, you can tell that's a big thing for me. <laughs> so I want to tell you guys about that. Um, so participate in the summer program. Uh, the other thing I want to tell you guys is, is a lot of people are going to tell you that you should be studying anatomy. You should be studying microbiology. You should be studying pharmacology. And my advice to you guys is don't be that student. If you participate in a summer enrichment program that happens to have that as part of the components, then fine. But don't just go grab an anatomy textbook or a pharmacology textbook and start studying, thinking it's going to improve you for medical school. If you haven't already been studying for the long term in undergrad, then that last little bit of couple weeks or a month of studying that that you get in before medical school is not going to make the difference, truthfully. And all it's going to do is to zap your energy when instead you should be doing our third point tonight, which is you should be relaxing and recovering. Use that summer, guys. I'm not kidding. It's your last free summer. After that, you're going to be in the grind, in the hustle, trying to get yourself to residency. And I know you felt busy in undergrad, but medical school is a whole other beast. So you're going to want to take that summer and just veg out a little bit. Enjoy some Netflix. Enjoy some Hulu. Enjoy some outside sunshine, whatever it might be, because you may not get to see that sunshine or that Netflix or that Hulu for a long, long time. This is especially important if you're a person who's in a relationship, if you're married, if you have kids, if you got a serious girlfriend or boyfriend, whatever it might be. Your time is going to become extremely precious and limited. Use that summer to bank up some goodwill. You know how we people say save for winter, right? Put it under the mattress. Right? Well, it's like Game of Thrones. Winter is coming, and it's coming in the form of medical school. So make sure that you bank in that goodwill with your partner, with your family, with these people that they've seen your face. You spent a couple weeks with them over the summer. That way, when it hits the fan in the fall and you get extremely busy, they'll be like, you know what? It's okay. You know what? He spent a lot of time with me over the summer. I'll be okay. I know he loves me. Relationship safe right there, guys. That's a bam. That's, that's the best tip on this video.
right? Save that relationship because you're going to want that support system as you go through your medical school journey. But take that time, relax, recover, shake it out, and get it going. And don't do the anatomy stuff. Don't do all that stuff. Simplify your life. Have a good time. Enjoy your family. And get ready. Be excited. It's a big time, guys. Medical school, it's, medical school is a, it's the best and worst of times. My wife and I talk about it all the time. It's the best and the worst because you get so smart. I didn't realize how much, you know, you hear about this drinking through a fire hose, but you acquire so much knowledge. You start to feel so smart. It's crazy. Your brain buzzes on a whole other level and you realize just how capable you are. Just how strong the human brain is and how powerful it is when you have to go into medical school and take down all that knowledge. It's just, it's a crazy feeling. You feel like you're, you know, Albert Einstein when you leave medical school because there's so much information. Um, but yeah. So anyway, that's what you should do. Summer for your medical school. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, take a second, like this video. Like it. Like it. Okay. Subscribe to this channel so you can get more of this goodness. If you want to be a better studier. If you want to be in a position where you can have a summer before medical school because you got your acceptance, get over to my website, get the course, premedproductivity.com. All kinds of courses to help you be your best, to help you be confident about your path to medical school. Check it out. And if you want me to do a video on a particular topic, if something's been bugging you, right? You have this itch, like what, what, what should I do? Put the question in the comment box below and I read all those comments. I make a list of videos that I should be doing and I'll be doing uh, going forward and I will try my best to get you an answer to help you out. Have a great, great day, guys. As always, you know what it is. No excuses, just dominate. Are you ready to dominate? Go out today and make today your first day of domination. I'll see you later.